Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering every other coin that you can mine with Bitax. We're going to be going over the solo chance and profitability. I know that these figures are kind of going to change over time, but this is just a snapshot in time. I'll also give you kind of a spreadsheet that you can create yourself so that over time, if this is viewed in the future, you can kind of calculate the chances of hitting a block on every other SHA-256 coin. Now, currently, just on the setup, we have the max right there, which is not hashing. The only one that's hashing currently is the Supra. We have been doing upgrades to the Gamma, including water cooling. So we're kind of leaving that there just for now. But today's video is mainly focused on these three boards. I haven't done one for the Ultra yet, but I'm going to say it's comparable to the max in terms of how much you can actually mine with it. I believe it's around the same hash rate as the max. But we've done this for all the bit axes out there, so the four that are released. You can kind of do the hex calculations on your own or the nerd axe ones as well on your own. But currently this video is just for the bit axe. Now, if you want to see one on different solo miners, please let me know because I can always make that video on, let's say, the Avalon Nano or the nerd axe that we were just talking about. So let me know in the comments, but let's get into the video and explore some of the chances of hitting blocks with these little machines. So firstly, before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to the person who gave me this video idea. This is Nature by Gus. So if you're watching this, this kind of video is spawned out of you leaving the comment. A very useful video at this point would be to compare all the best current coins that make sense to mine with the bit axe, their difficulty and chances of hitting a block with the hash rate of each device. I'm trying to look for this info updated and nothing that they can find. So I thought I'd make this video. We're titling it mainly what to mine with a bit axe, but you can apply kind of the same calculations to any other mining hardware that you have for SHA-256. So the way that we've done it is we've gone over to mining pool stats. We've clicked on Bitcoin and then on the side here, they have listed all of the SHA-256 coins and then we've collected all the data from all of them. So in this video, we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, eCash, Digibyte, AuraCoin, PeerCoin, Litecoin Cash, Free Cash, Fractal Bitcoin, and I believe that there's one more on there. So these are the main big ones which I would consider actually mining on. There is a massive long list, even if you go to Mining Pool Stats and you click on New Coins, there'll be new coins for SHA-256, as you can see here, SHA-256, and then you scroll down, SHA-256. So there's coins coming out basically every week for this algorithm, but none of them have much point in mining it necessarily. So to quickly explain kind of some of the mining or how it works, it goes based off the difficulty. So if you hit a difficulty that's higher than the network difficulty, and granted nobody else hits one higher at the same time, then you should get a block. For example, we're going over to mining Dutch here. Let's say that we pick this one, which is, let's say we pick Digibyte. The current mining difficulty is 1.01. .01, and our best difficulty that we've hit on the Supra is 2.68. If we had submitted that share to the Digibyte network, then most likely we would have got a block from that. So that's kind of how it works, but it is a probability game. So when I'm explaining these figures, they're not necessarily concrete figures because you could mine forever and be very unlucky and not hit a difficulty that is higher than the network difficulty. That's why I'm kind of not including it in this video. These are more probabilistic chances in this video, kind of what I'm explaining. There isn't any concrete figures because networks are always changing. You don't know if you're going to actually hit a difficulty above the network difficulty, or you could be really lucky and hit it, you know, on your first couple of shares. So there's a lot of luck that goes into it, but over time, if things even out, this is kind of the figures that you should get on a long enough time period because luck should always come down to 100% luck. So that's kind of the difficulty explained. So you could be mining forever and never hit a difficulty above the network difficulty. That's just luck on the network. However, as I said for this one, we're gonna go based off probability and that's why we're not including the difficulty in this, but we will cover that section kind of now. For example, the Supra has been mining maybe for three months, and this is the best difficulty that it's ever hit. So when you're looking at the difficulty of networks, it's in this kind of line that we're looking at here, we'd only be as high as hitting a Digibyte coin. 
anything under that we could have probably hit within that as well so any of these coins below here but we don't have the feasibility to hit any of these ones yet because we haven't submitted a share that is high enough to get into any of these for example fractal bitcoin is 10.78 g and we've only hit 2.68 g so we need four times the best difficulty to actually hit a fractal bitcoin block and as i said at the start of the video there's no saying that you can ever hit that best difficulty it is just a luck and probabilities numbers game and that goes for all mining across the board not just on sha256 or on the bitax it goes for a6 as well so here we have a spreadsheet that i put together and i know it looks confusing right now but we're going to go through some of the calculations go through kind of chances of hitting a block and then how many years it would take we haven't included the profitability here just because it's going to change kind of instantly as the video comes out but profitability will explain at the end how you calculate that and you can add it into the sheet if you wanted to. So I'm gonna cover everything or all the calculations that we did in the sheet and then you guys can make it yourself if you want for a certain coin. So first one here is the network hash rate and then the blocks per day. So this is vital to the calculation. Network hash rate is kind of how much power there is on the network. So if you divide that by how many blocks there are per day that kind of gives you the hash rate you would need to find a block per day but in this case we obviously are not going to hit a block per day on the bitcoin network so what do we do we have to convert our hash rate on our boards or on our miners over to exahash so these figures are all in exahash and they've been converted to exahash just because it makes it easier on the calculations and it makes it easier to display we have here the bitax max and then the supra which is in red the gamma which is in yellow and then gray is just the coins network hash rate and blocks per day so the way that it's calculated is you convert firstly the hash rate of your miner so whatever miner it is you convert that into exahash because that's what we're working off so you always want to convert into kind of the network hash rate that you're working with for example this would be in petahash but we've converted it up to exahash and so we need to also have our figures in exahash to do the right calculations easiest way to do this is to go to coinguides.org and you can use their hash rate converter calculator so you just input kind of your terahash so we might have 1.2 terahash and it spits out the number in petahash exahash even gigahash megahash kilohash whatever you want so for example, our Supra does 1.2 in terms of terahash and the exahash is 0.00012. And you can see that converted right there. We've done the same conversion for the Supra and the Max and that's basically just to convert it into exahash. So now the next calculation is chances of blocks per day. It's a real simple calculation. Once you get your head around it, you take kind of the hash rate of your miner and then divide it by the hash rate of the network to basically find out how much of a percentage of the network you hold and then you can actually times that by how many blocks there are per day to show you what the percentage is of finding a block per day on the network you can also do it per block and you would just not include this figure right here so you can see here calculation is pretty simple e4 so our hash rate divided by c4 which is the network hash rate times by d4 which is the blocks per day so times in it by the amount of blocks per day you can see that different networks have different blocks per day i don't really know if there's any concrete figures out there or a list of figures where you can find this out i had to look around a bunch of places to find the blocks per day but that's a pretty simple calculation that you can see there and then it will spit out your chances of finding a block per day in a percentage figure so you can see right here obviously bitcoin is the lowest percentage across the board but obviously the gamma is also a higher percentage because it has more hash rate. So the probability is higher that you'll hit a block on the Bitcoin network. As I said, it does matter about how much difficulty, but over time you should submit a certain amount of difficulty over a certain amount of time. For example, when we go back here, let's just say for three months, we submitted a difficulty of 2.68. And that means we're probably due for another difficulty to be hit that's a little bit higher because we hit that straight off the bat 
but it is always down to probability and luck at the end of the day. So these percentages don't really mean much because you can't really put that into a tangible figure, which is why we've included down here the days and the years. But let's focus on this just for two seconds because we have a list of coins that we're kind of covering today. So we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Fractal Bitcoin, Bitcoin SV, eCash, Peercoin, Digibyte, B1T, Litecoin Cash, AuraCoin, and Free Cash. Now, personally, my recommendations would be that you stick to anything that's kind of above Digibyte. So these ones at the bottom, I wouldn't personally go with. They have a lot of problems, and even Digibyte doesn't have much wallet support or exchange support. So even if you wanted to cash these out, it's not necessarily the easiest methods to actually cash out anything below that. Even Digibyte, Peercoin, and eCash, I personally think that they don't have that much support even in terms of wallets and in terms of exchanges as well. So the big four that I would go for personally is Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Fractal Bitcoin, and Bitcoin SV. And you can do your same calculations with whatever hash rate you have, but I do see a lot of people going for Digibyte because I would regard it as slightly better than Peercoin and eCash with a higher probability of hitting a block per day, just in terms of you can sell it on exchanges if you really want to, and there is kind of some wallet support for it, at least more than eCash and Peercoin. So this is filtered to give you the lowest chance of a block per day. So anything at the bottom is a higher chance of block per day because it has less network hash rate. So anything above 100% would give you how many blocks you would have per day, but you'd have to divide it by 100 because it's a percentage. For example, you have here on the max 86%. So that's definitely not going to hit one in a day, but it's close to one block per day. If you go down, you have 554. You divide that by 100. That gives you 5.5 blocks per day on the network. As I said, I wouldn't really go for any of these because realistically, there's not much support for them. But I thought I'd include them just to give it an example of what you wouldn't mine and which ones you actually would mine. One thing I also want to note is this is going to be an update in calculation, so you're going to have to input your own figures. However, if you look at this and you see a higher probability of hitting a chance per day of a block, but something below it has a higher difficulty, you're technically better off going for something that has a higher percentage in terms of the chance of blocks per day. I can kind of show you this right here. So you sort by difficulty, which we've already sorted by, and you can see that Bitcoin SV has a difficulty of 74.41. Fractal Bitcoin has a difficulty of 10.78. However, when we look here, Fractal Bitcoin is actually lower in terms of the chances of block per day than Bitcoin SV. So in my mind, it would make more sense to mine Bitcoin SV between the two. But that is based on a probability figure and not necessarily the difficulty of the network. That's why it was important to explain it at the start, that difficulty and the hash rate on the network are very different things in terms of probability. So if you're looking based off pure numbers, you would say that it'd be better to mine Bitcoin SV. However, it has a way higher difficulty than fractal Bitcoin. So you can't necessarily trust pure calculations of probability. You have to kind of believe in the fact that there is luck on the network and look at the difficulty on them as well. Now, you could just go for a different approach where you would pick the lowest difficulty possible that is close to what you would hit weekly or monthly, which is kind of one of the things that I've explained in earlier videos is you would want something that you can kind of hit weekly. So you know that after about a week, you would hit one block and we have this displayed here. So you can see below we have the amount of days, which is a calculation based off the chances of one block per day, you would take the number one and divide it by that because it's a percentage and that will give you how many days that you have until you mine one of these blocks. And then you take this number in days and divide it by 365 to give you how many years. So when we're looking at this, as I said, going based off the fact that you would want to hit a block weekly, you can kind of look for however many days it would take and kind of convert that into weeks. For example, Bitcoin is going to take 38,000 years on a bit max. 
24,000 years on a supra and 14,000 years on a gamma. So a quite dramatic drop actually from the max to the gamma. As I said, it is all kind of calculated out based on the hash rate. But as you go down the list, you can see Bitcoin Cash is a really dramatic drop. So there's kind of a chance that you would hit a block on Bitcoin Cash. Fractal Bitcoin and Bitcoin SV, 12 years and eight years. However, Fractal Bitcoin based on calculations as we saw is technically a lower difficulty. So it would be less, but the probability calculation states that it wouldn't be, which is interesting to observe. And then as you go down the list, we're focusing on the gamma right here, just because it's the highest hash rate. You can see the eCash, it would take you 1.8 years. And then Peercoin, it would take you 254 days that we're seeing here. And then Digibyte would take you around 46 days. So around a month and a half. So, I mean, that would kind of be the range that you're looking for. Obviously these are for the solo hash rates. We have done calculations before where we've included all three of the hash rates together and that actually increases the probability of hitting a block. For example, if you add the hash rate from the max and the supra and add it to the gamma, your chance to hit a digibyte block in days kind of reduces by half. So this number would be something like 23 days across the board, across three of them, and that would be your chance. Then you come down here to V1T, which gives us a figure of six days, which is technically a week. As I said, you are kind of looking for something that can produce a block a month or a block a week. If you're going for this strictly mining and trying to hit blocks and profitability, I know it's not necessary with the Bitax, but if you want to do, that's kind of why I've made this video. And personally with the Avalon Nano, which is, I hear a lot of people talk about three to four terahash on them, you could hit a Digibyte block probably every two weeks with that four tera hash that you have floating around on that. And that would probably be a better way of mining because you can kind of quite confidently hit blocks within a shorter time frame. And I know that a lot of people out there are doing that with those mini miners, even with like the Nerdax Q. I've seen a lot of people doing it for Digibyte as well. So based on these figures, I know it's kind of looks like a lot here. Fractal Bitcoin is one that I would go for. Bitcoin Cash, the dramatic drop between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash is actually quite good. I know a lot of people also do Bitcoin Cash just because there is kind of a possibility that you would hit it. And with Bitcoin, it is kind of a long moonshot. Fractal Bitcoin is one that you could go for as well. Bitcoin SV, I wouldn't personally go for eCash or Peercoin, but I would go for Digibyte underneath that. So overall, based on the recommendations, I think if you're going for a top prize, Bitcoin is kind of there. Bitcoin Cash is way more realistic in terms of hitting a block. And I think the reward is around $1,000 for that. If you're doing fractal Bitcoin, you might as well just go for Bitcoin Cash because there is a possibility that you hit a very high difficulty and it's wasted on fractal Bitcoin. I personally think the same for Bitcoin SV. And then if you're looking for smaller payouts, but kind of regular, Digibyte or eCash. The only other coin that I think is works for regular payouts at smaller hash rates is kind of Digibyte. It's in the perfect difficulty range for people to continue hitting blocks either weekly or monthly depending on the hash rate. So those are my three recommendations. Either you stick to Bitcoin, you go a bit lower in Bitcoin Cash, or if you want a super regular payment, you go for Digibyte. Obviously this will change as time goes on as there's more coins coming out, but I don't think it's gonna to change too much. I've given you the calculations, so you should be able to do them yourselves. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, even if it's like a year down the line, I'm sure I'll be checking it. So make sure you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.